You got a shot to win with Rover. Uh, Stansbury's got one for you around one o'clock, and then I hook you up with the last one at five. Guardians are about an hour in uh, to this uh, first of four games on the West Coast against Seattle. It's three to one Mariners right now in the top of the third, and that's who they will play for the home opener next season. They announced the MLB schedule March thirtieth is the season opener. The Guardians will be on the road for a week, and then they'll come back. April the 7th is going to be the Guardians' home opener next season against the Seattle Mariners. Ken Griffey Jr. and the Seattle Mariners. I don't know who plays for the Mariners now. Ichiro Suzuki. It's Good Friday. And the, what is? April 7th. Hmm. What's so good about it? Uh, I think that's when Jesus came back. No, it's when Jesus died. <laughs> oh, it's when he Jesus died. It's a weird name for it. Uh-huh. It's so good because he died. So Easter Sunday is the ninth. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Boy, I, I dreaded the Lenten season when I was going to Catholic school because it was nonstop. First of all, Lent, you had to give stuff up. Chips. Well, no, we had to, like, go hard every Chips. year. So it was like TV, oh. you know. And uh, then you got closer, and your big payoff for all that was we already went to Mass every morning, but then you're going at, during the school day. Good, There's no service on Good Friday, obviously. There's no Mass on Good Friday. You longtime Catholics know this. But there's Holy Saturday, and then Easter Sunday. You're going, and, oh, God, never ends. Never ends. Holy Saturday was a special night at a strip club I used to go to. Yeah. <laughs> so holy. Yes. <laughs> um, Philippines is a fun place. <laughs> Easter in the Philippines. Did you see that Jacoby Brissett uh, clip? No. Oh. Mary Kate Cabot, I think, was the one in the locker. They were talking to some guys about uh, season and everything. And Oh, no, I guess a guy asked. Mary Kay Cabot was talking to Joel Batonio, but um, some dude was talking to Jacoby Brissett. Is it hard to not try to be Deshaun when you're when you're out there? Oh, it is very easy for me not to be Deshaun. Because, <laughs> 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 you know, uh, he put girls' uh, hands on his wiener. A lot of girls. That's very easy. <laughs> ah, we got what you mean. We got it. I had never even seen that Jacoby Brissett guy. I thought he was a white dude. Um, oh, there really? he is. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, he says it's. he went viral for saying that uh, it's very easy for him to not be Deshaun Watson. I feel like it's pretty easy just to, for anybody not to be like that. Yeah, it's hard to be that you good know? at football. Is that what you're trying to say? It's yeah. not easy for Deshaun Watson to not be Deshaun, to not be Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Some other people are getting in trouble with the ladies, too. Two arguably high-profile dudes have had some accusations leveled against them. This one guy we just saw, we were watching, it was probably the third to last episode of Better Call Saul. For people who watch Better Call Saul, the series has ended. Series finale was on, I think, last week. But in one of the final episodes, uh, it's Saul in the future, and he's running a scam on people, he's getting them drunk, and then when they pass out, he's spiking their drinks, and then when they get home, he gets all their information or whatever. And he, uh, one episode, he's at the bar, and there's this heavy set dude who's laughing and getting drunk, and he's, and I go, why does that guy look so familiar? Just the actor looked familiar, and so I waited for the credits to show up to see if there was a name I recognized, and there was, and the name was Devin Ratray, and I go. I told Gwen, I go, that's who that guy was. He played Buzz in Home Alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And he is being accused of rape. I mean, Devin Rat Rape, am I right? Because <laughs> his name sounds mm-hmm. kind of similar to that. Anyway, a female friend of his has accused him of uh, uh, drugging and sexually assaulting her. What we call pulling a Cosby. Uh, about five years ago, she filed a police report in New York, but nothing ever came of it. Uh, and again, I know this is a tale as old as time for you ladies, but God, it sucks every time you hear something like this. Yeah, I filed a report for every guy that goes, why didn't she say something? 
this is what happens. Yeah, I said something, and for whatever reason, uh, nobody did anything. Uh, he's currently, it doesn't sound like things are going well for him, right? He was in the one that they did with. Uh, it was like a straight Holmes, to DVD yeah. or something. It was a uh, Disney Plus, I believe. He's currently facing uh, facing domestic violence charges with his current girlfriend. Uh, but this uh, other woman has come forward and said that um, he uh, drugged her and sexually assaulted her uh, five years ago. He denies these unequivocally. Says that they've been friends for a long, long time, but uh, nothing ever happened. She said he poured the drinks and was very specific. Uh, he was intent on giving her a specific drink that he poured. And she said that uh, she drank it and she got extremely tired. I only have one personal anecdote experience of seeing someone get roofied, and it is bananas. Yeah. A friend of mine, when I used, to, I used to do a lot of club gigs when I was on in Pittsburgh, and a friend of mine, we were usually hanging out at uh, a lot of these gigs, and somebody clearly drugged her drink because about 45 minutes later, like, I had to sling her over my shoulder and get her out of there. It was like she just, it was very clear something was going on. I had never seen anything like that. I had never seen it since. So to have that happen to you would be, I imagine, terrifying. I think it happened to me one time in Chicago. I was there for spring break with a couple of girlfriends, and we went out to a club. We were not that drunk. Like, when we got to the club, we were like... Fine. We may maybe had one or two drinks at the bar before that, jumped across the street, just hopping around. And all three of us blacked out at that second club. And we're like, we ordered one round of drinks. Nobody bought them for us. But we were, this was like 2011. We were standing by the bar with our drinks in our hands and like dancing and stuff. And we're like, it could, it would have been very easy for someone to walk by and like sprinkle something in or talk to us and like you know what I mean like we barely remember anything after the drinks and the next day all three of us were like deathly ill like puking up green vomit and like we're like what the hell happened to us but last there night? weren't any guys that were like hitting on you at the time not like in- or, intensely or, or anything lurking like that. waiting for something to kick in the only thing was is that none of us remember anything and we had only, that was like our third drink of the night and we don't remember getting back to our hotel all of us got back safely and together we all woke up in the room the same way could you maybe have just the three of you been doing some things and... we roofied each, one of the girls roofied the other two and we all how well did you know these cute. people i don't know i worked with them so i knew them pretty well but mm. but yeah it was one of those really bizarre things where we're like we don't remember there being a point when we set our drinks down or anything like that, but the fact that all three of us kind of blacked out at the exact same time and were super sick, like couldn't get out of bed, puking the next day. Yeah, if it had been anyone else besides this friend of mine, I would have thought maybe she was just crazy drunk. But this was somebody who could hold their booze. Right. And so I was like, wow. Because that's your initial thought is like, oh, did you not eat or did you whatever? But it was the same thing. She was out like a friggin' light. And if I hadn't been there, who knows? Right. It was creepy. Creepy. So anyway, Devin Ratray and then George Foreman. I saw this on TMZ. George oh. Foreman has been accused of raping girls in the 70s. Um, boy, Bill, I bet those lawyers can't wait to grill him. Ah! <laughs> now, what's what's hard about that is if you subpoena George Foreman, how many people show up? Because every one of his kids is named <laughs> his George Foreman. His kids are all named George. <laughs> Your Honor, I submit that I am innocent of this because I'm 12. <laughs> I wasn't even around in the 70s. Yeah, he's accused by two women who said that they were underage in the 70s. Uh, when they were, t well, they were teenagers. I don't know if that, if they were underage, but um, two women who used um, pseudonyms said that they met him when they were, oh God, they were younger than 10 years old. So that's a hellacious allegation that they met him through their dads who both worked for George Foreman. Um, I guess they said that that's when he started grooming them but it wasn't years later that, until they were 
assaulted. So they're looking for $25 million. Casual. $25 million. Did they, did they know each other? Well, he says that they're trying to extort him. He said over the past six months, his women have been trying to extort he and his family for mil- something. You just license your name and then do some commercials and probably some appearances. But when you like licensing is just usually like a lump sum. Mm, you probably get a percentage of each little grill. Yeah, I think after a while, I think when they really blew up, he probably did. Um, but it I mean, doesn't, the it doesn't dude's sound worth like three hundred twenty million dollars. Yeah, it so. doesn't sound like this is a surprise to him. He's like, yeah, these women have been trying to get this money from me. So, for it's, every situation where there's a legitimate claim, there, you know, and for but, people to go, they're just trying to get money. Sometimes there are people just trying to get money. I understand that, but isn't he in his eighties? Like how? And and I'm not victim shaming or anything like that. I really want to know. Yeah, but this was uh, 40, 50 years ago. I, I understand that, and and that's my whole point is, even if he did do it, and I'm, I understand the whole- He's cr- 73. That's what I'm saying. In, in the criminal aspect, I understand how hard it is to charge. But just with a deposition, how do you expect someone in their 70s to remember something f- det- in detail 40 years ago? Like 40 years ago, you're asking a guy in his 70s to remember- Intimate details. Yeah, but I think I'd probably remember if I raped a couple of teenagers. I don't think that's something <laughs> that, that would go. That slip the mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, doesn't go into the train. You know, uh, let me give you this uh, uh, trip to Vegas here. <laughs> Tell you what, I am the king of transitions around this bitch. Uh, it's our iHeartRadio Music Festival. It's about a month away. You and a pal fly you up, put you up, right? The whole shebang, tickets to the damn thing, and then one thousand uh, dollars to get you up and running too. Last chance for you to win today. So listen closely. Good luck. Hey, it's Rover. Time for your shot at $1,000 and a VIP trip to Vegas for our iHeartRadio Music Festival. Text the nationwide keyword FESTIVAL to 200-200. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info, standard data, and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's FESTIVAL to 200-200. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. Next chance for you to win is going to be, I think, in the 9 o'clock hour with Rover. And then uh, Stansbury's got a keyword for you at 1 o'clock and then 5 o'clock here. Uh, anytime you, if you're listening on the iHeartRadio app, there's that little talkback button there. You can leave us uh, quick messages there if you like. I was on my way to buying some meth in uh, Elyria and Lorain County and thought of you guys because they have uh, Kit Kats blueberry flavor. <laughs> blueberry <laughs> like flavor Kit Kats at their family dollars. So just wanted to let you guys know that and uh, hey man, meth ain't that bad. <laughs> Can't have it, but... Um. Man, that is... That was like a little... A little movie there. There's a twist I hadn't. Loved that. I hadn't anticipated. I was on my way to buy some meth, and then I saw blueberry Kit Kats and thought of you guys. I thought of you guys. That's very no sweet. Problem. Thank you. That is heaven. Heaven prepared those Kit Kats. That is. They're not that, that was good. very casual. He said it's the most casual mm-hmm. tweaker I've ever heard in my life. Hey, you just buy some meth. I was on my way to buying some meth <laughs> in uh, Elyria and Lorain County and thought of you guys because they have uh, Kit Kats blueberry flavor. Blueberry muffin flavor Kit Kats at their family <laughs> dollars. So just wanted to let you guys know that. And, uh, hey, man, meth ain't that bad. Yeah, meth ain't that bad. When I you can how- chase it with some blueberry <laughs> muffin Kit yeah. Kats. He specifies Lorain, Elyria and Lorain County. I'm like, yeah, you'll find it there, but you'll also find it in Cuyahoga County. Oh, well, I won't lie to you, though. I'll tell you what. I'm going to make myself a little note about that family dollar. I... They're all over. Yeah, that's fine, but I'm not often in a family dollar. Yeah, I, there's not a family I, dollar in Bay. Go down Woodland Avenue a little bit. There's one in Rocky find. River, mm-hmm. I think, or a Dollar Tree or something. But um, uh, no, I, I have to go in one of those places for a specific reason, like there's a Mountain Dew flavor or something like that, right? Well, today, it wasn't part of my pre-show constitutional. But around lunchtime, I realized that I still had this CVS card in my pocket from when we were in Jersey, and it had ten bucks on it. I go, yeah, you tired. brought it up yesterday. Yeah, I'm You're tired right. of walking around with this thing, right? So I walk. Next, we have a CVS a couple of uh, doors down. You walk around this massive construction project, and there's a CVS right around. So I go, I'm gonna go in the CVS. I get some nuts or something. It's like a goddamn war zone in there. The CV- Have you been in there? It's Yeah, that's it's a dude, nightmare. That's- there was a dude just standing <laughs> well, there who starts chatting me up. This cat is wearing a Green Bay Packers <laughs> uh, gazuntite, wearing a Green Bay Packers cap, and this cat starts chatting me up 
about how, like, his uncle was a Liberian warlord. I'm like, Bowley or Chroma? And he walked away. But, I mean, man. It's really Just only, randomly. Like, conven- there's a Walgreens down on 9th, closer to the Brown Stadium. But those are, like, really the only two kind of convenience stores downtown. Yeah. So, if people need anything, yeah. that's where they're going, you know? Yeah, that place has always been kind of sketch. Well, I don't even... Not I, even sketch, just not like... Not sketch, well, just, just like... It, just it was random. It was it's just very, a mess. It was very thinly... It's uh, just run through all the time yeah, because it's run so... Because there's no So many to go. people go yeah. to it constantly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have any problem in there. I just walked in. I was like, oh, my God. I had to go there during the Republican convention because I was doing that thing for Hulu, and uh, I... Was I? I didn't know how long I was going to be there, and I had to go buy a phone charger. And I went in there, and you think it's rough on a day like today? Oh, during the RNC. During the RNC, <laughs> it was. I was I was so lucky to. Ha- I got the last charger that they had, and it was just complete. Like there was no shelf that was in any order. Everything was on the ground. It it was like uh, the bit about Ross's. That Sebastian does, <laughs> yeah. where someone takes a look at something, they go like, "This doesn't go here," and just chucks it across yeah. the room. This doesn't fit. Just mm-hmm. throw it on the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a pack of tube socks <laughs> broke it, torn into. All right, let me take a break. I'll have those smashing pumpkins tickets for you when we get back here. Uh, they're going on an arena tour coming to Cleveland on October 29th. Smashing pumpkins and Jane's addiction is the show. So if you want to get to that, I'll hook you up uh, when we get back. 35192 and a text for anything else, alancockshow.com. You can watch, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite. 